What's going on everybody? I'm DJ Son from Astralis R6 and today's video we're going to be going over the Oliver Queen of the Rainbow Six Siege universe and that is Habana. So in today's video I'm going to be outlining her loadout, her role, a little bit about her gadget and the buffs that they gave to it and I'm also going to be detailing one of the attacking pushes with Habana. But in addition to that if you stick around to the end of the video I'm going to be offering in-game examples of me actually playing Habana in a ranked game. If you've been here before you know my model you know I can't just talk about it I gotta be about it too so be sure to stick around to the end and actually see how she's played but now it's time for the question of the day so my question of the day to y'all would be this what is one thing you would add to siege and why my answer would be to make a remake option if someone disconnects any time during the first round kind of like how valorant has it i think that'd be better for people who solo queue and have someone to leave or disconnect midway through the first round that's happened to me too when i play siege like near the end of the round or the middle of the round somebody would just disconnect and then we're forced with playing 4v5 for the rest of the game so anytime during the first round if somebody disconnects i think there should be a remake option but those are my thoughts let me know yours in the comment section down below but that's enough rambling for me for the intro let's get straight into the guy let's do it baby yeah all right, so now a little about Habana's loadout. So she has two guns. One is the Type 89, and it's an assault rifle, and she also has the Supernova, which is a shotgun. Now, if you watch the videos, every time, I do not run anybody with a shotgun. I can't do it. I, I don't know, I, like, I don't know if I don't have the mental, like, thought, or, like, maybe I'm not smart enough to play it with tactical precision to make it, like, really shine, but, you know, I can't really use the shotguns on anybody that's especially if i'm attacking maybe on defense i could use the shotguns but on attack most definitely not so for me i'm running the type 89 so this is her assault rifle as a primary the 1.5 scopes i love in this game so it doesn't put you at a disadvantage for long range and close range you can just pretty much fight any other battle with an acog i can't really see things when i scope in like i'll scope in and somebody will actually be like right outside of the cursor or the scope or whatever and i'm like yo if i had the other scope i would have seen him so the 1.5 definitely does me good that's what i run on her flash harders are king and siege when it comes to muzzle breaks so if you slap a compensator or a muzzle break on there muzzle break is just for single fire guns so if you slap a compensator on there it's actually more recoil than it is if you put a flash harder on and she has an angle grip or a vertical grip now if you not new here you know I'm Mr. I can't control that recoil, so I'm definitely running the vertical grip on any other type of gun that I play. If it's somebody that I need to play aggressive with or something like that, I might slap the angle grip on there just to, you know, see how it feels. But for the most part, I'm running a vertical grip on her. So that's pretty much it for the primary side. 1.5 scope, flash hider, vertical grip on her Type 89. Now for the secondary, she has a P229 handgun, and she also has a Bearing 9 SMG, sidearm SMG. Now me, I'm just a secondary SMG fan. So with Habana, I'll be more likely to, if I run out of bullets in my assault rifle, I'll be more likely to get a kill if I have a gun that's like, you know, automatic. So that's pretty much what I run on her. I put a holographic on there because it doesn't have any other type of scopes like the 1.5 or anything like that. Flash Hiders, King of Seeds, so I have that on the secondary as well. So, and secondary wise, that's what I run for her. Now, she has stun grenades and breach charges for her gadgets. This depends on how you're gonna push. If you're gonna be somebody that's like after you get your hatches and stuff like that, or you need to flash to open a wall if you're the only hard breacher, burn ADSs with my magnets, stuff like that, you could run the stun grenades. But if you're gonna be playing like Clubhouse, will be a good example. You know, if you're gonna be playing Clubhouse, and you need to get soft hatches that are on the roof or maybe they left the balcony wall soft or anything like that and you can just breach it with breach charges that would be a way for you to play as well so it just depends on how you want to play what your team is pushing when it comes to these gadgets so that's it for her loadout that's what i use y'all see the fit red and black is definitely the goaded color scheme now we're going to go into what her role is when you're playing her in siege so now we're going to talk a little bit about habana's role so she is a support operator in siege since she is a hard breach hard breaches in my opinion should always have the diffuser because they should be the last ones into an area where the wall is or a hatch to breach or anything that you're going to go ahead and open you should be the last one into that area your entry operators and the rest of your team should be going first and how this is done is because support players should rely heavily on drone usage your job with your drones as a hard breacher and a support operator is to drone ahead of your team and make sure it's clear for them to push or if you do see someone like a roamer roaming a visual jaeger or something like that that's usually who's on the roam 
make sure you keep eyes on them so that your entry can go in and they know exactly where they are and they can get that pick and you continue pushing towards the site. Setting your drones up in high traffic areas, I know I express this a lot in the videos that I do, or keeping the drones with you on the spawn so you could drone your team in from wherever they're entering from is definitely a must when you plant seeds. So make sure you're smart with those drones. If you're sending drones into the area or into the building in prep phase and you just looking at the people like, hey, shoot me, I would definitely say you're already playing the support role wrong. So protect your drones because it's a crucial part of gaining intel and siege. And once everything is clear and you drone out the areas extensively and operators like Maverick, Twitch, Ash, Buck, Zofia, or IQ get the stuff from the wall, like these would be cage charges, mute jammers, or anything that denies the wall breach. After that stuff is cleared, you can then just push in and open the wall or open whatever hatches your team wants to open and then work with your team on getting the plant down. That's pretty much what you do. If you have other drones, you can set them up in high, high traffic areas. So if someone happens to get picked in the round on your team, they can watch that drone while you're breaching the wall, watch your back, stuff like that. The only thing I would say is you still have the diffuser. So just don't run into the defenders just ready for war. Like I got my good gun, I'm gonna run at y'all and I'm putting everybody down. Don't, don't do that. Cause you gonna drop the fuser and then your team gonna be looking at you like, yo, you can't have a briefcase no more. So use your drones, like I keep saying, I jail your team a little bit if you're knowledgeable about the map and a quick decision maker and work, just work with your team to get the plant down and you'll win the round. That's basically Habana in a nutshell and what her role is in Siege. And one of the most excessive things about her is her gadget and they changed it a little bit. So we're going to get into what they did to her gadget right about now. So Habana's gadget used to be a one shot six pellet use on whatever you were going to open right so now if you switch the fire rate by pressing b if you're on pc i'll forget what the actual button is on console but whatever the switch fire button is on console too you can switch the amount of pellets that you use so the amounts are two four and six soft hatches require two pellets to blow open reinforced hatches require four pellets to blow open and if you're going for any wall or something like that, I usually use the two uses of the six pellets. So it has like a walkable hole in the wall. You know, you don't want to breach the wall so like you can't enter from it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I think Habana should also be like a secondary breacher for like hatches and stuff like that. And you should bring like an ace or a thermite or something like that for like big holes. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what y'all think about that in the comments down below, by the way. But soft hatches two, reinforced hatches four. And if you're trying to breach open a wall, I use the two uses of the six pellets on the wall. But what you can do is you can shoot two at it and figure out if like a bandit is tricking or a cade is tricking or something like that. Just use two pellets on the wall after you get the stuff and then see if the wall is being tricked or not. It used to be way harder for Habana to breach walls that were like being tricked by cade or by bandit because you would shoot six charges and they put the battery down or the electric charge back down and then they all get destroyed and now you can't open anything because you're out of pellets. So using the method of just shooting two at it and opening it a little bit to see if someone's tricking is definitely way smarter. If you just shoot it at the wall and shoot all of them and then just have them get destroyed, that definitely is going to make or break around for you. So as with everything, play smart, use your charges and variation of mounts, whatever to require the breach, and that's pretty much how it's done. Now, it's time to explain a little bit about a push with Habana before I roll the in-game example. And the map I'm gonna be talking about is Oregon. So that's one of her strongest maps in my opinion, besides Clubhouse and Bank. So we're gonna get into an Oregon push right now. So a quick little example of an Oregon push is basically you will want to help your team drone kitchen, meeting, dining, stage, and also the top area for any roamers. That would be like the kids dorm area, stuff like that. So taking meeting first is usually what I do when pushing in and blowing the hatch open so they make it so that teams aren't safe to rotate from in the site to the pillar area through the side room. It used to be like e-box if I remember correctly before the rework. So that little side room area, you can stop rotates and stuff like that. Or make it unsafe by opening the hatch and meeting so once you take meeting you blow the hatch you can make your way to freezer and main lobby hatches and blow those hatches open as well this is all for pressure so after those hatches are open it's time to put pressure on the site itself at that point so it might be a good idea to bring another breacher just in case your team decides to go for the wall in blue on oregon and this is if they go basement site by the way so we're, we're attacking the basement site i forgot to say that earlier i should have said that a little earlier but yeah the defenders go basement site habana pushes in meeting gets the hatches Push it in security, gets the freezer hatch, and then you get the main lobby hatch as well. Once the hatches are open and it's time to put pressure on the site, what I decided to do in this in-game example that I'm going to provide to y'all is I wanted to drone out the hatch drop since the clock was getting ate at and 
I kind of just sitting there like, yo, I, I need to play, I need to make some type of play. That's pretty much what I did. And you can see what happened for yourself. So I'm going to let this example play out for y'all. A little bit of what I explained is in this clip, but also in addition to that, you're going to see the finish and finale. This kind of was the other team like being a little like, you know, what, what were you doing, bro? But you know, I, the play still got made. So, you know, we're going to roll it. I'm going to play this pretty much a standard Oregon push with Habana and I will catch y'all when this round is up. Backstairs is uh Valkyrie super low. He half made and somehow he didn't kill Clash. It sounds like he just ran pitch or meeting. I think I hit him. He ran into blue. Wow. Good job, bro. So that's pretty much how to play Habana uh, in a nutshell. You know, you push in, you get hatches. She can blow walls open, but I don't really use her for big hole breaches. Like I'd rather bring a thermite or ace for that, as I explained a little bit before. That's how you use her. Hopefully a lot more people will be running hard breach because this role is so hard to get people to play when you're solo queue. Everybody wants to be a fragger and stuff like that, but I'm here to let y'all know there is room for support players too, all right? We need you, you all y'all breachers that play Thermite, Habana, Ace, Maverick. Listen, we need y'all. Y'all are essential to seize, okay? So hopefully this makes y'all want to add another breacher to the team. But if there's anything that I said that you disagree with, let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the Straw and Star 6 channel. We would really appreciate it. And if you want to see more from yours truly, you can head over to my channel. All of my socials are at DJ Sign, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, everything is at DJ Sign. I'm gonna pop it up on the screen for you right now so you can see it. So you can head over there to my channel, maybe drop a sub, stick around for a while, see what I got for you, you know? And also check out the guys that we have on the Astralis R6 channel. There's a lot of good stuff over there. So go ahead and check it out and see what we got for you. But that's enough of me rambling for the outro now. Astralis, thank you for having me and I will catch y'all in the next video. Good luck on your ring games and y'all gonna be great. Peace.